going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Sumini Hobbies channel. Um, today I'm going to be doing a 10,000 mile review on our 2022 Mustang Mach-E Select rear wheel drive. That is quite a mouthful. Um, so today we're going to be going over uh, just a few topics. Um, I'm going to go over the reason for purchase. I'm going to go over the pre-purchase experience, uh, the initial response, the 10,000 mile review, which is the main um, point of the video, as well as the cons um, that we did and didn't like. The main reason for purchase uh, for us in California, the gas prices were getting to 650, 675 um, per gallon and we drive a 2007 BMW 328i which takes 16 and a half gallons and um, my wife drives to San Francisco sorry my wife drives about a hundred miles per day so with that she was filling the car up every three to four days and you know the cost of gas alone was costing us four to five hundred dollars easy um, per month so that was a big uh, obvious move for us to go towards a you know cheaper fuel better for the environment and um, you know it's just more cost effective overall for us um, there was also you know the government rebate the 7500 from the government and then there's a, another 2500 from California uh, CVRP rebate which is the clean vehicle rebate program so they gave uh, I believe it was two thousand dollars was what it came out to be it wasn't uh, twenty five hundred dollars but that is what we got um, and I think you know overall the if, if, if the rebate wasn't available and um, the gas prices weren't out of control we probably would have just stuck with the car that we had um, you know until it broke but based off the situation that that the country was going in in that situation we decided to make this move um, so overall it's been four months um, and I think overall it, it, it has served its purpose. Um, I am personally the only one that spends money on gas and I ride a motorcycle to work. So we've seen our gas expense basically disappear at this point. And it's, it, we kind of use the, the gas expense to factor into the cost of the vehicle as well as, as far as the monthly payment. So that's something that you're going to have to work with. I'm not really sure the reason that you're going to get it but that was the reason that we needed to get it um, another selling factor for us was we are uh, where we work we are able to charge at work so you know she, she, she and the distance in the vehicle um, covers you know 100 miles a day so she charges at work four to five days a week which you know el eliminates much of the fuel cost or you know fuel savings that we would have had um, and so that's an, that was another really big reason um, for buying the Mustang Mach-E. Our pre-purchase experience uh, was quite interesting. It took us about eight months to get the vehicle in our hand from the time where we said, okay, this is the route that we're going to go. Um, it took about eight months to get the vehicle. That being said, we got it in July of 2022, and we've had it for about four months now. Um, when we did go to purchase the vehicle, a big thing that was going on in the market at the time was Ford was marking up their vehicles five to ten thousand dollars and I'm sure some people have seen um, a case in Hawaii where the F-150 Lightning was being marked up fifty thousand dollars which was the MSRP of the car so um, we ran into the same thing um, there's really no getting around it uh, so the initial price was Forty-eight thousand six hundred and five dollars. The MSR, the base MSRP is uh, forty-four nine ninety-five. So we had the. It was basically it was spec to the top. Whatever we didn't choose the the outline of the vehicle. We actually took over someone else's uh, uh, reservation. So they had fully spec the vehicle. Um, you know the autopilot, the cargo pad, uh, floor mats, uh, all that stuff. And so we didn't, um, we didn't really need to do anything from there, but we did, once we started to, to sit down and sign the paperwork, we realized that there was a $5,000 markup. Now, 
that is about 10% of the, it's a little over 10% of the vehicle. So, um, the, and once again, we couldn't really get around that. Every, every dealership that we had talked to up until that point, they were, they were talking five to 7,500 to 10,000 for the Mach-E Select, not for an all wheel drive, not for a California edition, not for a premium or a GT, just for the Select. So that's, that was a, it was a bit, uh, how do I say this? It was a bit, underwhelming in the experience. That was the one issue that we had purchasing the car. Um, so basically 53 after the $5,000 markup plus tax. So you're at 53 and a half plus tax. I mean, you guys can do the math. You're looking at 59, 58, 59,000 out the door um, for a vehicle that's supposed to start at 44,995. So perfect. Based on that, my pre-purchase experience was not very good. Um, but hey, this is what you have to go through uh, during those times. And gas prices were out of control. And it's not like I had a choice in what we could have done. It's either I pay the price or I wait another year to two years when they actually have the vehicle in stock. And to this day, it is the day after Thanksgiving 2022 and they are still not in stock. You cannot go to the dealership to purchase this. You'll have to make an order and the order that you're going to make, uh, you're probably not going to get it for another six months. So this is the issue that the, the, the initial pre-purchase uh, experience is kind of rough. Um, I'm not sure how it is for any of the other vehicles that are out there, but for Ford, it was uh, a bit underwhelming. So with all that said, um, once we got the car in our hand, what did we think? So initially, we were very surprised by the vehicle. The interior is much higher quality than I expected from Ford. Um, the in entertainment system, um, I didn't know it had Android and Apple CarPlay. So for us, that was a big, uh, it was a big plus being able to get in the car and operate the, the 15 and a half inch screen, um, you know, with whatever device you're most comfortable with whether that's android or apple that was a that was a big plus for us as well and then you know all the other things that you would expect from an ev um it's zero to 60 is very fast it's peppy it's um sporty you know what i mean it feels it doesn't feel like an oversized vehicle as well um and you know, I haven't taken this thing on, you know, deep, windy roads, but I have taken it into some interesting situations. And, you know, for the size of the vehicle, it performs very well. I'm sure the all-wheel drive version probably performs slightly better since the front and the rear, you have grip, um, you have it pulling from both sides. So I'm sure that one performs a little bit better. But overall, um, for what, we're tr what, what we purchased it for, it gets her to and from 100 miles from work, no problem. Um, we can get the groceries in it. We can we can transport our, our child in it. Um, and we still have space for three or four more adults in the vehicle with a with the car seat and, you know, three, four, five bags in the back. So for me, it is the perfect size. Um, and initially, you know, our, our initial response to it was amazing. I mean, there's really, there was really nothing that we could complain about. Um, Initially, of course. Okay, so here's the cons. Um, okay, so here we're, we're going to move into the cons now. And um, I had a few cons. Um, there's literally three. So the first was my wife complained. It's that the side view mirror sizes are very tiny. Um, I don't know if it's, t it's the shape of them. It's a weird shape. And then on top of that, the um, the height of the vehicle, it's perfect for when cars are behind you and they have their lights on, it blinds you perfectly. So that is an issue that we had. I think that's more of the size of the vehicle issue, less of you know Ford or whoever the company is that makes the vehicle. I think it's where the where the uh, light is off of the ground that causes that issue. Um, secondly, is when I took the vehicle on a back road and, and, you know, took it around a little bit, the tires are, so it's a 225 by 60 by 18. So the 18 is great, fine. 
the 60 is, you know, it's a lot of cushion on it, but the 225, for the amount of torque that this vehicle has, for it to have a 225 tire all the way around, it's just, the thing is all over the place. Um, it feels like, it feels very high off the ground, just because when you take the corner and you feel the back end skip out, it's not, it's not as planted as you want to feel. So, I mean, you know, if, it, if they went with some staggered, you know, say 225 up front, 255 in the rear, no one's going to complain about anything. But those tires are just way too damn skinny for the amount of torque that's coming out of that, that motor. And, you know, I'm sure they, they knew that, but that was that's more of my issue. I don't like the fact that they're so skinny because when I put my foot to the ground or I take a corner, I want to have confidence that I have enough grip back there that, you know, I'm not going to push myself out of this corner, basically. Um, and lastly, the last thing that uh, I wanted to touch on as far as the cons is the heater. So I wasn't aware of this before purchasing an EV, but I guess I'm an idiot because I should have known this. Um, there is no engine to create a heater. To, you know for the for the coolant to run through the engine to heat it up for then the heater to use that coolant to heat up the cabin so you're starting from scratch so the heater is using electricity from the battery pack right so if you if you're going 100 miles once again we use this example if you're going 100 miles uh, no heater there you're fine you're good if you have the heater on it's gonna come down significantly I would say at least 15 to 20 percent um, over that 100 mile range so one way that they've you know gotten around this is the heated steering wheel and the heated seats and the two front seats and that's great and all and it works and it gets you away from heat using the heater but i think that's one of those creature comforts that all of us are used to and now that we aren't necessarily able to use it i uh, and when we do use it we're penalized for it that is the problem that, um or the con that i have um other than that the the uh the AC doesn't really cause any issues. The AC, you know, you can run that all day, but for whatever reason, it's the heater. Um, probably, it's probably harder to heat something than it is to cool something. I don't know. I'm not a goddamn uh, scientist or engineer. I guess I, it would be an engineer at that point. Um, but yeah, those were the only cons that we had. The tire size, the heater, um, and, and the windows. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, rear view, rear view mirrors, the side view mirrors. Um, I'm going to throw a little bonus in there just because I've already said it. Um, the initial cost of the vehicle going from 44, basically 45,000 to, you know, 60,000 out the door. doesn't feel good. You're paying 33% more than what the uh, listed MSRP was, right? So if I'm... If it says 45 and I end up paying 60, I pay 15 more. That's about 33%. So based on that, you know, those are my four cons. Um, once again, I have said there's really not too much you can complain after 10,000 miles with this vehicle. Uh, it has performed the same from day one to, you know, at this point, month four. And I'm... My wife is happy. I'm happy. It does what I need it to do. It does what she, you know, she needs it to do. And the fact that we're able to save the money on gas and uh, charge at work are huge for us in the grand scheme of things. And that was another reason, you know, for buying the vehicle and probably the main reason why we are so happy with the purchase. So. Okay, so moving on to the 10,000 mile review. This is what everyone is here for. Um, so there are, there are a few things, um, that I want to touch on. So one of the things I guess that I didn't know that through user experience has taught me is the city miles versus the highway miles are two different ball games. So if you're, for example, if you charge it to full and it says 200 miles to empty, if you're driving in the city, you're going to get way over 200 miles. Um, if you're on the freeway, however, you're likely going to get exactly that 200 miles that it's quoting you. Um, so that is a big difference. If you're commuting to and from work and your commute is all highway miles, you're probably going to use exactly what the dashboard says. Now, if you're using it for 
I mean, you could still use it in the morning for commuting to and from work um, and stop and go traffic. I know, you know, the Bay Area has a lot of stop and go traffic. Southern California has a lot of stop and go traffic. So um, in the morning, if you're in stop and go traffic, it, it actually um, saves a lot of the energy that you're using to get to your destination. So let's say it's 25 miles. If you're in stop and go traffic, you'll probably end up at your destination with 15 miles off of off of uh, your estimate, which doesn't seem like much, but that's 10 miles that you wouldn't have had from a combustion engine, right? So that's another thing to think about. Um, and that's, you know, that's the main uh, thing that I think uh, people aren't talking enough about is the added mileage that you can get from these vehicles. Another thing is the uh, battery degradation. Um, I've been hearing a lot of things online about, you know, high mileage um, EVs and the battery degradation. And I know that this car has a 100,000 mile or a year uh, warranty on it which is uh, guarantees the batteries to up to 70 or if they're under the 70% threshold, then there's an issue. Um, but it says 10,000 miles, uh, you should have about a 30%, you know, drop. So after 10,000 miles, we haven't noticed anything. So um, I'm not, I don't know what that says, you know, about the, the longevity of the vehicle. We still have 10 X to go before we really know um, uh, what's going on with the battery degradation. But, Charging it, it's been the same. Usage pretty much been the same. And you know, it's very, you know, it's very accurate. Um, the quality of the vehicle has, has also kept up. Um, I've transported wood in this thing. I've transported, um, I mean, obviously kids, all types of luggage. I mean, we everything that you would use a regular hatchback for, I have used this hatchback for, and it has performed just as good, if not better. You know, and anything that does pop up, Ford is on it quickly with the over-the-air updates. So with that being said, 10,000 mile review, it feels just like new. Um, and I don't really see it, you know, we'll, we'll see in another 10,000 miles how it feels. But for now, it feels like we just purchased it, which is uh, a good um, feeling for me, for sure. Thank you for tuning in to the Too Many Hobbies channel. If this video helped you, please like and comment below. Um, I will be making more videos in the future as we approach more milestones with that vehicle. Also, um, I do have some laser cutting videos coming up. I'm not sure if you guys are interested in that, but once again, I have too many hobbies. So I will just be putting out all of the videos uh, with those hobbies. So I hope you guys have had a great Thanksgiving. Happy New Year, and you guys take care. And gals.